Hello and a warm welcome to this Mindler webinar on quiet quitting. My name is Frida Boysen and I will be your host for today. And with us, we have two prominent guests to answer all of our questions on our today's topic. So let me welcome uh, Shirin Lei. Uh, you are a lead psychologist for the B2B part of Mindler. Warm welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah, nice to have you. And also a warm welcome to Ida Vate. Uh, you. you are uh, Chief People and Culture Officer at MindLearn. Yes. Nice title there. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah, nice yeah. to have you. And to all of those of you watching, please ask your questions to our experts, uh, all you might have on quiet quitting. And uh, let's start off right away. Sharon, to, to not beat around the bush, what is quiet quitting. Yes, this uh, new trend gone viral. Mm -hmm. um, I think it can mean different things to different people, uh, but generally uh, I'd say uh, it's about employees making a choice to uh, do work-related tasks during working hours and also to kind of stay strictly within the boundaries of your job description. So it's not about quitting your job, it's about not going above and beyond. Mm -hmm. um, no more answering emails late at night or, you know, taking new tasks. Mm -hmm. um, so in a yeah. way, it's sort of, it's sound of sort of healthy, but, but isn't it also a, a bit of, you know, not walking the extra mile, not being super enthusiastic? I think you're very correct in describing it that way because you also see these kind of two versions, right? You know, one more proactive, positive uh, that you mentioned, you know, setting boundaries, healthy boundaries between work and life and the other like more negative version mm. where you're, you know, just doing enough not to get fired. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have these two, these two versions, mm -hmm. uh, I'd say, if you listen to all the voices, you know, about mm. quiet quitting. True. Um, so, Ida, looking from the employer's perspective, right. um, how do you think most employers think when they think of quiet quitters? Well, I think it's easy to at least uh, misinterpret uh, some of the signs or, or actions behind it. And uh, easy to interpret it as being lazy, perhaps, or unengaged. Uh, being unflexible is also something uh, that's been on the ra radar because you, you don't see that a person or employee goes beyond and above and that's usually a sign to a manager of engagement mm -hmm. and wanting to go somewhere. Yeah, and isn't it a bit unflexible? I mean, if I would be your employee and you ask me to do something that I don't usually do, uh, my response would not be, uh, oh, I, that, that sounds interesting. I would like to look <laughs> upon that and help you. Yeah. Or maybe it would rather be, well, that's not on my list here. <laughs> so I don't know if I can do that really. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it could be. It, it could be just a case of being unflexible, just of wanting to, I guess. Mm -hmm. But um, usually I think there's more behind it. Mm. So it's, it's more doing a good manager's job is to ask the questions on why don't you want to do it? Mm. Maybe there's a very good reason behind it. Maybe you've been that person that, that's gone beyond and above for years and you're tired, you don't want to, or there's other things in, in your pri private life that hinders you from having that flexibility. You need to know, so you need to ask questions. Mm, interesting. We'll dig more into the solutions, but I'm thinking, why now? Why is quiet quitting on the agenda now? I, I saw a Gallup uh, survey uh, made recently uh, this year saying that more than half of the American workforce uh, identify themselves as, as quiet quitters. Um, is this a reaction towards other issues when it comes to work-life balance? What would you say, Sharon? I, I would definitely say uh, that's, that's one uh, kind of uh, cause to this or a reaction. Uh, so um, burnout rates are mm -hmm. high uh, globally and um, many might use uh, quiet quitting as a way to cope with long-term stress mm -hmm. and like chronic overworking. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that there are other reasons that kind of make people go quiet quitting. Uh, one that we touched upon just now is um, poor support. Mm. Uh, from management. 
Um, I think, you know, uh, we can do a lot <laughs> if we have the support. I mean, we want to feel uh, valued. We want to know that what we do is important. And we want to know that, you know, it kind of, you know, uh, connects to a greater, a greater vision or, or hmm. so. Uh, so I think that, yeah, burnout is one reason. Poor, also, poor compensation. I mean, True. I think a lot of young people are thinking, you know, I'm doing what I'm hired to do. Hmm. Uh, and um, I'm not really seeing that compensation is matching the effort I put in. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go home at five. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah. yeah, so maybe this is a shift in loyalty from yeah. loyalty from to your employer uh, rather to the loyalty loyalty to being in, to yeah. yourself. Yeah, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, actually, I'm a strong believer that we at least partially this is a generation shift mm. uh, and something that needs to shift uh, probably uh, from going from the uh, being ten years or more in a company getting the golden watch and loyalty in you know, and, until you stop working entirely, to shifting um, to being more about work-life balance, uh, mental health, uh, having, having a good balance in your life overall. Hmm. Working is, is important, yes, but it's not everything for you. So I think that the younger generation is trying to show us that there's a need for change. Hmm, interesting. Hmm. So, um, thinking that you are a quiet quitter and you don't like it. I, maybe, maybe you don't feel that, I, I, I don't want to be a quiet quitter. I, I want to be engaged, but, but it doesn't work for me right now. Uh, if I'm not happy with being a quiet quitter, is there a way out? Is there hope for me, Shireen? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I, I definitely think. But I also think that, you know, um, uh, because there are so, you know, a, a huge variety mm. in, in what quiet quitting means. I mean, if you are thinking about quiet quitting or you're feeling like a quiet quitter, I'd say ask yourself, you know, why? Mm. Uh, why are you wanting? Is it, is it more boundaries you want? Try to, you know, create more healthy boundaries. Uh, are you feeling uncontent or unfulfilled at work? Address that. And I think that whatever the reason for you you know going into quiet quitting i think you benefit from lifting it from addressing it at mm. work from talking about what you're thinking how you're feeling if you're you know feeling i'm not being compensated enough or mm. i'm not really engaged in the work that i do try to see if there is anything that can be done to you know make mm. changes in your role i think sometimes we underestimate uh that we can actually uh, have an impact on work and what we do at mm -hmm. work. And I know it's hard sometimes that most people kind of feel, you know, we, we just, mm -hmm. you know, do what we're told to do. But I think mm -hmm. there are, you know, ways to kind of uh, connect and communicate around mm -hmm. this. So, so what you're grasping at here is that the quiet part of the quiet quitting is not maybe uh, the healthy part of it, right? Definitely, yeah. definitely. Uh, putting your finger on the, you know, that, that's mm -hmm. kind of the, the big thing here. The, 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 the big problem, uh, um, um, you know, talking about this phenomena is the quiet part. Mm -hmm. um, so, Ida, uh, yeah. looking again from the employer's perspective, yeah. uh, if we look at the quiet part, yeah. uh, how do we break silence? Again, if I would be your uh, employee yeah. uh, and you are guessing that I, I, I'm, I'm a quiet quitter how can you break the silence how can you address these questions well I, it can be it can perhaps be hard to get all the honest information in the first meeting but I would uh, definitely start there uh, to invite you to one-on-one -on -one, have a meeting uh, ask you curious questions about you know your work life your tasks uh, what's going on outside of work and also if there's any honesty I need to share when it comes to my expectation, also put that on the table. Because I mean, the, the same as you two are, are in facing now, uh, the quiet quitting isn't the, the huge problem in itself, it's the quietness about the quitting. Mm -hmm. So we need to speak about it. So communication and clarity in combination is the key forward mm. uh, to address this issue. Mm. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about, uh, how often we communicate because I, uh, my experience is that we do have one-on-ones of course uh, at work workplaces all over the world mm -hmm. but, but maybe not as often as we should yeah uh, what would your recommendation be Ida to lift this question I think uh, it's more important to have short 
uh, interactions, but continuously think having long meetings every quarter or every six months or whenever you have the performance reviews, mm. because that's never going to catch the discontent in time. So if you have to choose, I would choose the one-on-ones perhaps bi-weekly or monthly if it's hard to do it that often. Um, I know teams who does it weekly also, you might just sit for 15 minutes. It doesn't have to be very complicated at all. Hmm. And, uh, and if, if we are the employee again, and if we want to raise these questions to, to, uh, to make a change happen, um, could you give us some help, uh, Shirin? How, how, do I, how do I do it? I think we, we all benefit from, from uh, practicing assertiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, practice uh, talking about uh, what you're thinking or feeling or, or your wishes. Um, and I mean, at the end of the day, I also believe that it's the responsibility of, of management uh, mm -hmm. to kind of make sure that there are <coughs> ways uh, to do this. Mm. Um, but it takes kind of two to tango in a sense and, and you know, mm. both, both should uh, take steps forward to this. Could quiet quitting be contagious? Uh, I'm thinking if we have one quiet quitter in an organization, you know, does it affect the rest of the team? Have you seen anything yes. like that? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have a double yes here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it does. does. Yeah, I mean, it's a definite in itself and, and you can call it whatever you want, but discontent or not being alive in a team is contagious uh, and, and it also creates lower engagement. Mm. Uh, there's also a high risk they will in the end or long term create conflicts because if you're just doing the bare minimum of your field, it will almost automatically put more workload onto mm. your colleagues and that will create frustration and irritation and that will soon create conflicts. So uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure, it's contagious. Oops. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so how, the bra how to break the viral yeah. effect? <laughs> Definitely yeah. agree. I mean, I mean, that's how we humans uh, work. Yeah. I mean, basically, neurologically, feelings, they, they are contagious. And the strongest feeling will be the most contagious. Mm -hmm. So I think we can, I mean, we've all been in a meeting where someone is, you know, yeah. showing. <laughs> Not <laughs> as present time. or, yeah. you know, so looking in the air thing, or, you yeah. know, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that mm -hmm. effect. Uh, the climate. Um, yeah, true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so I uh, addressed all of you earlier saying that uh, please feel free to ask questions. So I'll, I'll have a look into our, 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 um, our view right now. No, I can't see any questions so far, <laughs> but I'm, I'm sure they will, will pop up. Um, I'm thinking about the, the, the global question here. Is this, is this a limit, do you think? Does it nerd down to different nations or is it the same trend all across the globe? Does this have anything to do with um, uh, conditions that we work yeah. under? What, what do you think? Well, um, it's hard to say for sure since so mm -hmm. this, is, this is a, a hyping trend right mm -hmm. now and uh, the majority of the studies has been done in America mm -hmm. and if we were to compare, for, for example, Sweden and America, the labor law situation and the social security system mm -hmm. is way different. Mm -hmm. So there might be uh, some things in America uh, that we don't have an issue with in Sweden. Uh, but coming back to the discontent, mm. just like the term of quitting and quiet quitting, it, I would say is a problem, uh, both to the individual and to the employer. Uh, something that you need to address. And mm. either it's time to move on to another employer and something that you like and feels meaningful, or it's something that you can get from the employer, mm. but they don't know of. Um, uh, but I'm sure that there are differences and similarities. Uh, again, it, it, it's a new way of phrasing it, but I don't think it's a new issue. Mm. We have been measuring this in HR for years. It's called ENPS score, for example. True. And that it says the same indications, right? So mm -hmm. are you an engaged employee or not? Are you just coming to work and doing your thing, but you're not really engaged? So mm. and that's a high number and has been. It is. Yeah. Mm. 
uh, b before this uh, this uh, uh, webinar, um, uh, I asked at, at LinkedIn. I said, "So, so is there a, a contrast? What, what would that be to to the quiet quitting?" And I was thinking to myself, maybe it is an LLL, as in loud lucky love bombers. I'm thinking <laughs> if I would be a colleague, and I, I'm, I'm, you know, guessing that you are a quiet quitter. I'm thinking a way out of it to help a friend out of it would be to maybe love bomb that person that is walking a little bit of the extra mile. Uh, what do you think of that as a strategy? I think it's great, it's support, <laughs> and we need that. Yeah. So, uh, a, a lovely idea. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have any other ideas? If, if we're not talking management or yourself, how can we help as you know, friends, mm -hmm. colleagues, if we are suspecting that someone is a quiet quitter and maybe it's not really content with it? I mean, if you could be, of course, but if you're not, how can you help a colleague? Well, I think that, I mean, when we talk about quiet quitters, as we do now, we kind of forget uh, a large group of quiet quitters who are very content. Mm. I mean, for them, it means, you know, I'm doing my work mm. and I'm, you know, I'm doing exactly what I was hired to do. Um, I'm just not doing more. And, that, mm. and that's okay with me because I have created this work-life balance that works for me right now. So in that sense, you know, Kudos for you. Good for you. Mm. you know, keep mm. on you know, uh, doing that. It's going to be good for your health and you're going to get a positive impact from that. Yeah. But if you are, on the other hand, of this negative, more negative version of quiet quitting, where you are just you know, day in and day out going to a job where you know, you don't, um, job satisfaction is low, engagement is low, obviously that's going to have a negative uh, mm. impact mm. for you. And I think that, you know, um, talking about it with your colleagues, talking about your feelings towards work with your colleagues is a good thing. Yeah, that right. can make you get another perspective, try to look at it from different angles. Um, I think that could help you out. Yeah. And, yeah. We have another trend following the quiet quitting, which is called uh, quiet firing, mm -hmm. uh, that the employer actually, uh, in a way, you know, starts giving less and less uh, interesting uh, tasks to, to this employee mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, wh what do you think about that strategy, Ida, the quiet firing? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's as complicated on the mm. other side, and I think that ultimately can lead to a lot of stress also and perhaps a feeling of being left out of the team. Mm. Uh, if you don't get to the bottom of, or the core of why someone is putting boundaries and not doing more than your job description, it's really hard to know if, I mean, what the reason is. Mm. Uh, so a manager interpreting that as not being engaged or lazy even, um, and then stops uh, offering a career mm. advancement or even salary raises, um, that's equally bad because that's the quiet part again. I mm. think that we kind of, yeah, yeah we, we kind of nailed it. That we're, like we're the there quiet again. part we don't like, <laughs> yeah, not on either side. Yeah. yeah. So some questions from the audience then. Mm -hmm. um, we have Amalia here that says, uh, Ida, a question for you. Okay. Uh, how <laughs> could the HR department address quiet quitting in the company to make sure this is not shamed, mm -hmm. but rather addressed in a good way? Example mm -hmm. on how to communicate with employees. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big believer uh, in two things, uh, especially. And one is to help the organization making a part of the structure because if you make it a part of the structure you'll automatically impact the behavior mm -hmm. and that links to the culture how we behave uh, that we don't shame each other for having feelings or needs for example expressing honesty and the other part is train your managers in the value of feedback and how to give feedback mm -hmm. and that last how to give feedback i've seen many <laughs> times very, very few of us are brought up uh, being taught how to give good feedback, it's constructive mm. feedback. And constructive and positive feedback. Especially the positive yeah. side, right? Yeah. Um, I know uh, the, 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 the magazine Arbetsliv in, in yeah. Sweden yeah. Uh, made a survey uh, asking Swedes on yeah. what is the most thing you value most yeah. at Swedish workplaces, and yeah. that is 
positive feedback. Yeah, I think we all need it. And it's like it's the core need of being seen and appreciated. Yeah. Who doesn't need that, right? Mm. Uh, but I don't think we have training for it. So you mm. need to set up training for your managers and also perhaps teach them about the triggers of and what the consequences can be if you don't give feedback. Mm. So, yeah. so why wait? We have two experts in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so please tell yeah. us if, if uh, someone in the audience is, is wondering, yeah. so how do I give positive feedback? I mean, yeah. me, myself, I love it and I do yeah. it all the time. But if someone is new to it, what, what, what would I mean, help yeah, out? A very easy way of starting and that goes both for the positive and the negative because if it's not linked to an observation that you both you and me can agree on, mm. it's not going to be uh, taken as true, right? Mm. So I would need to say something that you understand what that means. That, you know, when you said hi to me this morning when I opened the mm. door to the office, I felt really seen and happy and greeted. Yeah. Thank you, it made my day. Mm -hmm. uh, so it can be small things, so. but always connected to an observation. So genuine yeah. and, and yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I think it's so important, <laughs> so good that you raise the issue yeah. of, of yeah. feedback. Yeah. And I think also this is what, what we're talking about. Why is this happening now? Remote work mm, true. is one. I mean, this is the you know the pandemic has is you know uh, changed the way we work. Mm. And I think feedback was hard for many, mm -hmm. and is even harder today. Mm. Yeah, and the, the, yeah. the hybrid way of working yeah. with with uh, yeah. long distance and so yeah. forth it continues. So so do you have a, a takeaway for us to want to give more positive feedback even though we're not in the same room or maybe not in the same city or country? Most people do have online meetings yeah. and you know uh, maybe slack or messages use it and practice mm -hmm. it does not cost a thing it doesn't time. yeah and, and make that, it so, part of yeah. your structure because yeah. i mean even here mindler we have always quick check-ins in our meetings uh, that can be either something that you're uh, wanting to say about yourself but it can also be just giving very quick positive feedback mm. and like for in one minute it doesn't take more than that True. yeah and also there is research showing that every time you give something, even yeah. positive feedback, you, you get more happy yourself. So mm, we're all winners. The more you give, the more you gain. We're right? born to give. Yeah, we are. <laughs> so more questions. I'm, I'm racing through them here. Uh, from Ilva. Uh, oh, I'm trying to translate in Swedish here. Um, hmm, uh, hmm, and then we're going, uh, oh, never mind. Uh, I'll, I'll continue. Okay. Um, uh, and another uh, interesting trend in a trend, uh, some people are commenting to me is saying, well, have you noticed that quiet quitting maybe is not only a trend at your workplace, but maybe also in your relationship and in your love life. Mm -hmm. So what happens when quiet quitting, you know, comes into your relationships? Do you think that is common, you know, that you huh. just put in nothing <laughs> more than, you know, the minimum? And what happens to the relationship then? Oh, wow. <laughs> that is a very good question. Do, do you think that is common? Uh, I mean, think, think of a long, you know, marriage or whatever. Yeah. And you start becoming a quiet quitter. Yeah. You know, you're not yeah. as attentive anymore. You don't say, yeah. oh, oh, God, I love your outfit. Yeah. Oh, you look so beautiful yeah, today. Yeah, I yeah. love when you, yeah. woke, you know, woke me up in that wonderful way. Yeah. You just became, become the quiet quitter. Yeah. And what happens then to the relationship? What do you think? Slowly dies. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, if you don't put in effort yeah. in your yeah. In your it relationship, is. that's going to have a negative impact yeah. in the long run. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but, I, but I, it, it's an interesting connection. It uh, is. It yeah. is. Yeah. yeah, it is. Okay, so time flies when we're having fun. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking at all the questions, but um, I'm thinking maybe we should go to the main takeaways, basically. So on quiet quitting, what do we take with us? What is the most important takeaway you would say from the session? Sharon, would you like to start? Well, the main takeaway is whatever the reasons uh, for you quiet quitting, whether they be proactive in you know uh, boundary setting or negative in trying to do as little as possible, take the quiet out of quiet quitting and address it. Mm -hmm. Great. And Ida? Uh, it's very similar uh, for my part as well. I, I think removing the quiet part of everything will make the whole difference of finding a solution. No matter what that solution is, if it's moving on or staying in the company and in, in, um, feeling that it's more uh, meaningful, it really doesn't matter. It's more about uh, if you don't say anything, there's really nothing that can be done. Mm. So 
speak about it. Speak up, folks. Thank you yeah. so much for speaking up in this thank session. You. Thank and you. Shirin. Yeah. And uh, thank you for joining us at this webinar. And uh, stay tuned. We will have more webinars from Mindler coming up next time this winter. We will be tuning in on economic, your personal economic worries and even anxiety in these difficult times. So what do you do about that? How can we help? Uh, until then, Stay safe and take care.